didn't support about my own party's manifesto, how I spoke to my constituents about Europe, for example, none of that has changed. It's the fact that our party, particularly on the Conservative side regarding Brexit, has been pulled away from us so rapidly um, that we are, you know, the party's left us rather than the other way around. And the other big thing as well, you know, we're really conscious, if we want to genuinely, as a group, change politics, really clean it up and offer the electorate something different, that's what the big parties are going to do. They're going to force us into by-elections before we're ready to suppress anything new being born. And we have to be really alert to that because this is an opportunity to create something better. But isn't Theresa May right to speak and consult with the European Research Group? They are uh, pro-Brexit, but there are a large number in your own party. What is wrong with her speaking to, that, to them? I mean, your manifesto talked about leaving the EU. There's absolutely nothing wrong with her talking to them, but she should be talking to all of us. And that's been... I think really that the moment of the penny dropping for us, that none of us who represent Remain constituencies or have been um, pushing and, and suggesting a people's vote might be a good solution, none of us. You know, Justine Greening, a recent ex-Cabinet Minister, has not been asked by the Prime Minister for her opinion. And that just tells us that it's not about her just listening to the ERG, she is controlled by the ERG. And our values and our thoughts and the, the worries and concerns of our constituents are no longer relevant to her. You, of course, leaving the Conservative Party, if there were to be a leadership contest, for example, your votes now, of course, would not be there. You would not have any right, uh, any say over that. Aren't you abandoning uh, the fight? That's what other, some of your other colleagues would feel, that you should have stayed in and fought for what you think uh, is the right direction for the Conservative Party. And had we... Um Left to join the independent group a year ago, I would have said yes, fair question. But the point is we have all been trying relentlessly. In fact, I forget which minister, I think it, um, or ex-minister, it might have been Oliver Letwin, I forget, one of our senior colleagues just recently said they see no evidence whatsoever of the Prime Minister changing course. Our voices are completely unheard and remain unheard. We have stayed for as long as we can, kept trying. Um, repeatedly to get the Prime Minister to listen to a, um, a different type of Brexit option that the House, I suspect, would coalesce around, a soft one, but she's repeatedly refused to do that. And how many times do you do that before you say, you know what, I'm wasting my time here, the country deserves something better, so I need to act responsibility and do something different. And how confident are you that there will be colleagues who will join you? I spoke to one minister today who didn't seem to think that there would be any willing to do what you have done. Well, I disagree with that. Of course, like all these things, time will tell. But just given the response I've had from, as much as I've been able to keep it with my phone beeping at me, um, numerous colleagues, understanding why I'm doing it, want to talk to me. A couple actually wanted to come to this press conference today. Um, the Lib Dems seem quite open. Um, so I think, you know, the next few weeks are going to be really interesting. You think there's a possibility that the Lib Dems might join with you as an independent grouping? I mean, they're the ones who have a national mm -hmm. profile. Yeah, I think... You know, rather than labelling groups, I think there can be MPs in all parties, actually, that are tempted by our offering. Um, the Lib Dems, of course, do seem like an, a central, natural fit, if you like, but it's a decision for every single MP to take, regardless of their party. Okay. Hi, Diana. Thank you very much indeed. So no one really knows what the future will hold. Obviously, you know, from Monday to now, there seems to be this new grouping, 11 MPs, uh, who insist that they can make a difference to British politics in the coming weeks and months. Yeah, what was it? Harold Wilson said, Vicky, a week's a long time. We've only got to what, Wednesday so far. <laughs> who Vicky knows Young, what's coming um, later? <laughs> yes. Um, at Westminster, the Conservative MP and Chair of the Welsh Affairs Committee, David T.C. Davis, the MP for Monmouth, is with us. Mr Davis, afternoon to you. Good afternoon. Um, how big a challenge do they represent to the Conservative Party? Well, in the short term, it's not going to change very much because they weren't backing the Conservative Party anyway on the Brexit vote, so um, it's, it's, it makes no difference at all. I mean, in the longer term, obviously, we'll have to wait and see. Um, you know, I'm, I'm a bit of a, uh, a student of history, and obviously when you do get people breaking off like this, it sometimes does have consequences, although they're usually quite hard to predict, so we'll have to see what happens in the longer term. I mean, I have to say that I, I listened to that interview just now with Heidi Allen. She stood in 2015 on a manifesto that said that we were going to offer a referendum on Europe. Uh, we won the election, we offered the referendum, we said we were going to respect the result. She went along with that in 2017. I don't know what she was saying to her constituents, but our manifesto was clear. We said we were going to implement the result of that, um, of that referendum. And so I really do think that if she was willing to stand twice for the Conservative Party on that, uh, on that policy in general elections, to turn around now and say, well, I'm, you know, I'm not going to back it after all, 
I think, well, why don't you should go back to her constituents? Let's see what they've got to say about it. I heard them all saying they were doing this for their constituents. Let's see what their constituents think. They say they want a people's vote. Let the people vote in their constituencies. That's and we'll always see. the standard response, isn't it, from parties when their MPs defect, but it almost never well, happens. Because, well, because they... Uh, well, a Conservative who resigned their seat when they uh, left the Conservative Party, or indeed a Labour politician. Well, I think of two Labour ones, well, one in the 70s, Carswell, one in the 80s. Well, I think Very Douglas rare, Carswell and Mark Reckless did, actually, uh, when they resigned their seats, stand again in by-elections. Um, but these people are specifically citing the need for a people's vote and saying that they're doing this for their constituents because they want a people's vote. They've got an opportunity. Let's see how much support there is for a people's vote by holding a people's vote in those constituencies is right it, now. Nothing it, to stop them doing it. Is it your view then that politicians who leave their party should... Uh, I mean, in a sense, it fits the idea of the recall motion, I suppose, because you can give that power to the public as a result of a reform David Cameron brought through. But is it your view that in principle politicians leave their party should go back to their constituents? They, they, should, they should certainly consider. I mean, if the Conservative Party had decided to do, do something that was not mentioned in any manifesto ever, um, you know, I can't, I can't think of an example, but some sort of ludicrous policy that nobody had ever thought. Let's say, I mean, Labour are always saying we want to privatise the NHS. It's complete nonsense. We don't want to do that. It would be a barking, mad, ludicrous insane idea which nobody in the Conservative Party has ever, ever suggested. But Labour have been saying it since 1983 and, uh, you know, and it seems to have some currency. So supposing some barking mad person let's wanted do, to do that, I, do I, with theoretic examples. I wouldn't support a party yes. that would, was going to national, you know, me, privatise the NHS. I think so, yes, I think, of course there are times when you could leave a political okay. party. But the, this was in the manifesto. What about we the, made that commitment in the manifesto twice. They stood on that manifesto and they're calling for people's vote. Let's have one. Bring it on. Bring in, on a people's vote in their constituency. In, in a sense, aren't you illustrating part of the problem here? That the that should, that's very unprofessional. That's, all right, don't worry. We've all been there. I'll give you a chance to, chance to, to uh, switch it off. Right. Yeah, we've all done that. We've all done that. I'm not going. I'm not going to school. I'd be sent out. <laughs> I'm not, we're not going to do that. We want to hear. You.